In this video, we're looking at how we select a sampling, a sampling method. That is who from your sampling frame gets to be in your sample. There are different types of sampling methods. There are probability sampling methods like systematic, stratified, cluster, and the simple random method. Then there are non-probability sampling methods like quota, judgment, snowball, and convenient sampling. So in this particular video, we're going to look at these different types of sampling methods. We first need to start by defining the difference between probab probability and non-probability samples. So a probability sample is a sample in which every one, every element, uh, we can make this more generic, every element of the population okay, has a known non-zero probability of being selected. So everyone in the population has a chance to be chosen to be in the sample. So that is a non-zero probability. So it's at least more than zero. Uh, and that that probability is known. So the key here is known and non-zero. The benefit of this is that we can then project the results onto the total population because if we know the likelihood of each of the characteristics in our sample uh, being in the greater population because we know the probability um, that they are chosen for the sample, we can then extrapolate for what's happening with the greater population. So this is the ideal we can then compute or calculate sampling error, which we'll look at how to do that in just a moment. So an example of this would be that if we did a sample and we found that 5% of the sample said that fuel efficiency was the most important feature in a new vehicle, we would like to be able to say, well, everybody, everybody thinks that, or 5% of everybody thinks that um, fuel efficiency is the most important. The question is, can you take that 5% of the sample who said that and say, okay, well, 5% of the population would say that. Well, we want to say 5% of new car buyers. That's the population of interest here we pulled the sample from. We'd like to say 5% of all new car buyers look for fuel efficiency when purchasing a new car. If we have a probability sample, then we can take that 5% of the sample extrapolate it to be 5% of the population of interest, which here is the new car buyers. And then because we know the probability of particular groups being selected into the sample, then we can add a sampling error to that number to know it's 5% plus or minus a certain amount is what we would see in the greater population. Now this is compared to a non-probability sample and the challenge with the non-probability sample is that it is a sample in which, come on, a sample in which specific elements of uh, specific elements from the population have been selected in a non-random matter. In other words, certain characteristics of the population have a zero probability of being selected. So there isn't this equal probability for everyone. This probability isn't known. There are gonna be some groups, some characteristics that are completely excluded from our sample. And the problem is, is not only do they get excluded, but we don't know how much that sample matches or doesn't match the population.
Now, the benefit of this, we can get this information quickly because we can get the people who are most convenient, who are quickest to respond. It's going to be cheaper. Uh, because it's not so hard to make sure that, like, it's not so hard to get participants or to get data. Data can be collected because we're not concerning ourselves on whether or not the, um, the entities that we're getting the information from are representative of all the different characteristics and features of the greater population. We're gathering typically more by convenience, whoever we can get. Uh, we're getting people who recommend other people, right? So it makes it easier to collect the data, makes it cheaper, makes it faster. But the problem is, is we can't calculate that sampling error. And so we couldn't, if we found out that our sample said 5% of them said that fuel efficiency was the most important feature, you don't actually know whether or not the population would also say 5% have 5% of them say that fuel efficiency was the most important. We can't really truly make that extrapolation. We don't know how accurately our sample reflects the demographics, the geographics, whatever it is about that population of interest that we've chosen. So we don't know to what degree that sample represents the population and we can't calculate the sampling error because of that. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into what we mean by sampling error. So sampling error is the error that occurs because the sample selected doesn't match the population. So we have some parameter, some characteristic of the population. So for example, we could use the symbol mu, that's what you see here is mu, to represent the average of the population for some characteristic. Okay? And we've collected the average for the sample. So this X bar represents the sample statistic, the characteristic of our sample, which in this case is the average for the sample. So let's say, for example, we are looking at age. We know we could, the, we have the population parameter, which is the average of everybody. And then we have the average of our group, our sample. And they may not match. Okay, if they don't match, there's two reasons they don't match. They don't match because of measurement error or they don't match because of sampling error. So here, this error, we have sampling and non-sampling. That's what that is there. Uh, and so we talked in previous videos about measurement error methods in, for example, uh, if we are, if we were looking at average weight, of the population, the average weight of the sample, if our scale had issues where one time it measured your weight and said you were 120 and the next time it measured your weight and said you were 125, that difference there, that discrepancy, that's due to the scale, right? That's a measurement error. Or if we aren't, if our tool of our survey has reliability and validity issues so it isn't uh, consistent, like the scale, or if it isn't measuring what we think it's measuring, then we have a validity problem, okay? Again, measurement error. And so we talked in previous videos about measurement error, making sure that when you ask survey questions that um, they're clear and concise so people know how to answer them and they're not double-barreled so you know which question they're actually answering, that you've given them all the actual options that they should have so that they can answer it correctly. Making sure that our research instrument really does get us the information that we're looking for. So that's the measurement error. The sampling error can come from our sampling design. For example, if we choose methods that, um, where we don't have enough variability, so the sample doesn't represent the population, then we have sampling error. We talked about some of the errors from sample design in a previous video, so that's what's living here. Now, if you have a probability sample, then you know that your group that's in your sample matches the group that's in the population, and so then our sampling error is more simplified to narrow down and we can actually estimate it, okay? If we have a non-probability sample, then that sampling error gets bigger because the people in the sample aren't truly like 
terms of opinions or characteristics like the population and we don't quite know how big this is. Okay, so that creates a bit of an issue. So if you were trying to calculate sampling error, let's look at how that would work. Okay. All right, so here we have information and our population parameter. So here we're looking at mu, that's representing our population mean. If we were looking at an example here, maybe our entire population of interest are these families and here's how many children they have, okay? The population parameter mu, we would find by simply finding the average of everyone in the population. So if we considered every household and we have in this six different households, what we find is the average number of children is what, 3.17, okay? 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 19, okay? All right, so in comparison, a sample is a subset. So what if we took a sample that was just the Clark and the Walston family? Then when we went to find the average number of children, one plus two is three divided by two, we would get 1.5. So you can see our population parameter and our sample statistic don't match. There is error, okay? And then the question becomes, how big is the error? How much difference is there over 1.5 difference between the population parameter and the sample statistic, okay? Now, if we instead took a different sample uh, let's say we did the Walston and the Dodd, then we would get two plus four is six divided by two. And then here we're getting that the sample statistic is three compared to a population parameter of 3.17. So you can see as we generate a different sample, we get a different distance from that population parameter. Okay. Another example, of sampling error is we could take, for example, a bag of M&Ms, all right? We take a bag of M&Ms, we could look at the proportion, the percentage of the different colors. So rather than our population parameter being a mean or an average, so rather than using mu, we could use capital P for our population parameter. And so we could look and see what percentage are green. Well, M&M reports that when they make M&Ms, they make 16% of the M&Ms green, which means the population parameter here is 0.16. Well, grab a bag of M&Ms and see what is the sample statistic. How many M&Ms do you have in your bag? So let's suppose your bag has 30 M&Ms and how many of them are green? If in your sample, right, 10 of them are green, then we end up with 0.33. If five of them are green, then we end up with half of that proportion. Now we're looking closer to 0.16, more in line with that population parameter. So you take a sample statistic, but it doesn't have to be an average. Here we have sample proportion versus population proportion. Okay. In the previous example, we looked at it was population mean versus sample mean. Identifying that the what is in the entire group, the entire population, isn't necessarily going to be the same as it is for the sample because you're only taking a subset of the entire group. The bigger your sample, so we just kind of go back to this one, it, the bigger my sample, the less sampling error we should see because it's going to be more like the population as long as we don't have a non-response bias where we have that, we're missing that particular cohort 
certain characteristics are, are completely excluded. But generally, if we can get a bigger sample size, closer to the size of the population, then we're going to have our sample statistic and our population parameter closer to each other, assuming we're not excluding uh, a, um, an entire certain elements or demographics. Now, when we look at research, when we look at data, we really have to ask ourselves about how the sample was collected. Uh, so for example, let's look at an article. It's a bit old. This one is from February of 2012. And this is during the Civil War in Syria. Now, this opinion poll asked Syrians whether they wanted President Assad to stay in power. And the survey found that 55% of Syrians wanted President Assad to stay in power. So they collected a sample, right? They got people to fill out their survey and 55% of their survey respondents said Assad should stay in power. And then they're extrapolating that to the entire population of Syrians and saying, well, if the sample said 55%, then the population must think that as well. So if we look at this in a bit more detail about how this survey was carried out, this is an internet survey of a thousand people in 18 countries. So these are people who are not living in Syria during the Civil War. In fact, of the respondents, of a thousand people who responded to the survey, only 98% of them, or sorry, only 98 people out of the thousand were actually in, living in, and were Syrians. So when we look at Syria itself, only about 18% of the Syrian population at this time has internet access. So the design of the survey in terms of how the information is collected is going to exclude the majority of people living in Syria. Who are the 18% of Syrians who have internet? The wealthy and the affluent. Well, how do you become wealthy in a country um, that has a more um, militant dictatorial leader? Well, you, it means you are a fan and uh, that you are a fan of the leader. And so of course that group is going to be more supportive of Assad staying in power. So this survey, in terms of how the data was collected, the population of interest was Syrians. The sampling frame though how they got people was people with internet access and only 18% of Syrians have internet access. And then they collected their sample, which means that of the thousand people who responded, only 98 of them were actually in Syria and they weren't representative of the greater population of Syria. So we have a sampling frame error and we have sampling error because the sample we have and the fact that 55% of them would support Assad doesn't represent the greater population's feelings. Why? Because it only represents the affluent people in Syria under Assad currently, which would be more likely to support maintaining the current regime. So there's sampling error. Our population and our sample don't match. And so this creates a problem when we go to interpret what is happening and deci making decisions is that the information obtained doesn't inform us about the greater population. Okay, So we have to be mindful of that, whether we're reading other people's research or designing our own research experiments. So we need to make sure that we can, as much as possible, make sure our sample matches the population to minimize that sampling error and if we can't, so if we are choosing, for example, a non-probability sample, we need to make that very clear as we put forward our results that that extrapolation can't be made, that maybe further research needs to be obtained, or here are some caveats, some carve-outs, some limitations to making that 
assumption that, that, that it represents the greater group and how the greater group thinks or, or feels. So we wanna be very explicit about any assumptions that we make, any procedures that we do, because of course, if, if you're doing this research on behalf of someone else, you want it to be clear that your recommendations only hold as long as those assumptions hold and that there are these limitations or restrictions on the recommendations you're making uh, so that you're not liable <laughs> if it doesn't match the population in general. So we need to decide on a sampling method. And so let's talk about these different types of sampling methods. Our first choice to limit that sampling error is the probability sample, but we often have to use non-probability samples because of limitations. So let's go through these different examples uh, in our next video.